All right. Thank you, uh, George. No problem. You guys have a good one. All right. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried is a nationally known comedian. He makes many appearances on The Tonight Show, actually, with Jay Leno, who just had his last show. So he's out of the show business uh, community now. Well, I think that Gilbert actually uh, will probably be on the new Jay Leno show. Oh. Uh, Gilbert also appears at Caroline's regularly this Thursday night at 8 o'clock. He'll be there on Broadway in Manhattan. He looks like an old Jew. Oh. There he is. He's coming in with two bottles of water. He also has a... Hold back your enthusiasm. <laughs> Gilbert, what yes. I see you come prepared, and I, I enjoy that about you. You have... Yes. A cup of something in your hand and then two bottles of water. What's that I, a cup of? Yes, I'm actually having a cup of coffee. Well, now, now, did you pay for that or did you make us go out? And uh, go I made you go out. And get right. I know you yes. always like to get free yes. things when you come here. I don't even drink coffee. Gilbert <laughs> passed by 42 coffee shops on his way. <laughs> I've never seen you drink coffee before. Yeah. Is this because you're a new father and uh, you need yeah. more energy? No, I'm like Amy Winehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yes. you you're did, not funny? You never, yeah. did, you never did drugs, right? Uh, many years ago. Well, now I, he's on AZT. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I did like, and I did. I would smoke grass occasionally, and then I got tired of it. Right. I can't imagine you as being part of the hippie generation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and anything vaguely cool you can't imagine. Did you ever see a picture of him on SNL? Yeah, he has big the huge afro, afro oh, yeah. and everything. But how did you pay for weed? Who, <laughs> who you always got free weed, right? Yes, I mean, yes. you wait for somebody to get yeah. some, score some, as they say, and then yeah. you. Uh, that's, that's, yeah. I look like Clarence Williams the third. <laughs> you had a look. You wanted yes. to get women, and you wanted to look youthful, so you had long hair, right? Yeah, and, and you were on Mod yeah. Squad. <laughs> So when you try drugs and, and you smoke this pot, what would it do? I know you normally are very, very loud and obnoxious. <laughs> so would you become mellow? Was that what would happen? Uh, it, I, I would. What, what made me stop is it was I get incredibly happy right, right after uh, smoking. And then immediately afterwards, get incredibly depressed and scared and everything. Uh, so normal. So, so it, yes. brought out, it brought out the worst in you, the pot. Yes, yeah. yes. And what would the Would you start thinking about your mother and father and your high school years? <laughs> and, and your career? Life what you, in general? What would you think about when you would get depressed? Yeah, because <laughs> I, I figured without drugs, I'm thinking about my career and how depressed it is. You know, there's one thing you never revealed to me. Yes. And okay. now, you know, now it's easy to laugh because you're a man about town. You're Huge success. <laughs> You're on the Jay Lance show. Everybody wants to be you. You're Everyone in your 24th year of playing Caroline. Yeah, yes. I mean, <laughs> every guy in America wants to be you, yes. the problem says. But, but the, the fact of the matter is, what, how, I, don't, I don't even know if you talk about this. How old were you when you actually first got laid for the first time? I mean, I, it was difficult for you in the beginning, oh, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. You didn't have a girlfriend in high school, I don't think. No. No, no, no. one wanted to know no you. Problem. No, yeah. no, no, no. And you actually quit high school, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean that had to be traumatic for your parents when you oh, left high yeah. school. They probably worried about you, right? Yeah. Yeah, did they How say to you? How old were you? They worried about me when I was in high school. Right. <laughs> how, <laughs> how old were you when you left high school? Oh, I was, um... Hmm. 22? Yeah. <laughs> oh, seriously. How old were you? 15, 16? Yeah, yeah, I don't know how old I was, but either first or second year of high school. So 14 or 15 years old. Yeah. Were you a bad wow. student? Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible but you're, but you're a bright guy. I mean, was it that you just... I mean, were, you, were you bad at math and science? Everything. Did you not concentrate in school? Yeah. Because, I mean, you're smart. I mean, to write jokes and to be yeah. uh, observational humorous. Well, he's only or... written 20 minutes of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> And but, most most teachers don't appreciate it when you're doing Abbott and Costello movies and so, <laughs> you're just quoting quoting Abbott and Costello meet the vampire. If you were to go back and look at your academic record, were you were you flunking out of high school? Uh, awful, awful. Yeah. And and so you announced to your parents, "I'm leaving," or you? No, don't even no, I just stopped showing up. <laughs> <laughs> and when your parents sat you down and said to you, "Gilbert, this is crazy. We got a notice from the school. You're not showing up." Did you did you laugh? I mean, I know you laugh and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, well, how do you get away with that? I mean, how do I mean? You just said I'm not going. Oh yeah. And they listened to yeah. you. They said, fine, you don't have to go. Uh, no, they tried to get me back, but it was just awful. Are you? So a, what did you do instead? Did you leave the house every day as if? Did you pretend you, were you had going a job home? for for a while? Yes, <laughs> yes. Thank what you. What did you do? Um, I just hang around and Jerked kill off. time. 
So you mean for a while As, you okay. pretended to your parents that you were going to school. And that could only last a couple of days the, because the school has to notify the them. The funny thing about it is I used to hang out at the library a lot, so I did more <laughs> reading by being How out of school. Than <laughs> so you weren't a bad kid. In other yes. words, you went and did something really nerdy. You hung out at the library. Uh, yeah, yeah. He wasn't like Brando and the Wild Ones. <laughs> <laughs> You, you were more like Brando in 1998. And did you like... You were not hooking and doing drugs. Yeah. You, were, you were in the library. Yes, I was defending Native Americans. Really? I just thought you started fucking supermodels every day. <laughs> And what would you do? And what would you do in the library? I mean, would you would you sit there and read actual books? I mean, oh yeah. Yeah. So you quit. You you said I'm not going to. You know I'm fascinated. I, I hang out there with the other homeless. But, you, know, you know I'm you know I'm amazed by this because be, and I'm being dead serious with you. Yes. You know, people tend to think of me as rebellious, this and that, and the other thing. But I don't think I would have had the balls to just not show up to school. And say to my parents, that's it. I've decided for, in my life, I don't need this high school yeah. stuff. I mean, that's tremendously brave to stand up to all these adults, isn't it? Yes. Gilbert's I mean, one of the bravest people I've ever yeah. met. <laughs> this is his Vietnam. Yeah. I, I'm like rebel without a cause. <laughs> right. Yeah, now, James Dean. You're gay. So let me understand what happened. It was almost like, though, when you go to the library, it's like they're not teaching me enough in school. <laughs> uh, so, so the, no, you just can't get laid, right? So the, so the, the school... Uh, at first doesn't notify your parents. So there's a couple of grace days where you can not show up oh, to school. Oh, yeah. Right. Did you have tremendous nervousness and pressure at that point in your life because you weren't going to school? I mean, you, you must have been waiting for this horrible oh, phone call. Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, you had to be nervous. Yeah. Yeah. And were you a disgrace to your family? Because I'm sure they had hopes that you'd go to college and all of this. Yes. <laughs> Why would they hope that? <laughs> And become a doctor. Were you more did nervous at that point or opening up for Belinda Carlisle? <laughs> did the people in the library get to know you? Uh, uh, no. No, no one ever got to know you. Yeah, yeah, even back then, they didn't get suspicious. Did you have any friends in high school who you could confide in and say, listen, I'm thinking about quitting school. Uh, did, is there anyone that you could go and talk to yeah, about this? Yeah, no. No, you had no friends. Yeah, there was a right. water fountain he yes. talked to a lot. <laughs> you had no friends. Well, you going to talk to a guidance counselor? <laughs> right. So, what, what was your decision? I mean, you, were you in math one day and said, I can't take this anymore? Uh, never any real out-and-out -out decision. Right. But yeah. what, were you tortured in school? I mean, were people shoving you in lockers? Yes. I can shoving, answer that, Robin. I wasn't there. Shoving him in a locker would have been nice because then he couldn't have gotten hurt. Yes. <laughs> were you getting in a lot of fights? Were people picking on you? Uh, not not any more than anyone else. Right. You yeah. Had, you, you, but you were not the popular no, guy. No, yeah, I no. No, I was actually the cool kid back in school. <laughs> yeah. You weren't Tom Brady. Yes. Someone, someone I, told I me I was this. the football hero. Someone told me you were raped with sticks. <laughs> that's true. Now, that's Henry Hill. <laughs> Is that true, though? <laughs> that the kids used to like to put sticks in your ass? <laughs> Some of the boys? Yeah, but you no, like that. But I am getting a hard-on thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> So you, were you abused? At, you were abused a little bit at school. The, the academically, you weren't turned on. And yes. then one day you decide, you know what? Instead of going to school, I'm, I'm going to walk this. to the library. Yes. <laughs> Here you are now, free of school, yeah. and you walk to a library. It, it's kind of like escaping from prison and going. I think I like myself in a basement. <laughs> I hate all this learning. I hate all this learning. I'm going to go read Catcher in the Rye. Right. Did you ever ask a girl on a date in high school? <laughs> Did you ever try to meet girls in high school? Oh, I couldn't even imagine it. You couldn't. Yeah. No. I a picture of a guy. Neither could they. Yeah. It just wasn't something you were up to yet, right? You were you were immature. Yeah. You were immature. Yes. Yes. Were you immature? Uh, me? No, I was always very mature. Right. Yes. You, you were older yeah. than your years. I'm, I'm Captain America. Right. Was he immature, Howard? This is a guy when you said, "Are you having a baby?" He went. <laughs> By the way. Speaking of babies, I don't know how many yes. people know this. We should say congratulations. Gilbert, you've had a second child since we've been here. Is yeah. she black like the Brad Pitt? <laughs> <laughs> what now? What, what's going on? You have two Gilbert, kids now. Two, two girls? Children? Yes. Two girls. No, no, no. Well, one's uh, the other one. The one. Yeah. And one's, <laughs> the other one's one. a boy? I, 
I'm still referring to them as it. <laughs> one of them is what? Uh, the, the other one's a boy. Oh. The, the new one. It's 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 a girl and a boy. It's yeah. interesting to me. I say, oh, it's two girls, and then you go, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, is David Brenner the father? <laughs> what did you What did you name? My kids, kids. What did you name? <laughs> 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 Mom, do your homework, and you too can be the best. You have to lie about your age. When you're, when you're 87, tell them you're 20. Don't believe it. When, when your children go to school, you'll expect them to go oh, to school. Oh, yeah. If, yeah. If, if your child comes home and says, I'm dropping out of yeah. school, that, there would be all, all hell would break loose, right? You want yeah. a better life for them than you yeah. have. <laughs> I imagine. Do you, do you see in their future the terrible abuse you saw? <laughs> so, so how do you like how do you like being the father of two kids? Is it fun for you? Are you are you starting not, to relate sure to these yet. kids? Do you relate uh, yeah. to them at all? Uh, yes. Well, we have the same IQ. Yeah. <laughs> do you ever enjoy yourself with them? Do you find any activities that you like to do with them? Uh, yes, like shitting in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> they both have sim they both have similar salaries. Though. You go to <laughs> so, so do you do anything with them, or are you pretty much hands off and let your wife do all of that? I try to be as hands off as possible. Well, yeah, don't she, be hands on with the kids. Is she yeah. a priest? <laughs> you got you got married. Though, yes. Right, you're, you're you're married. Yes. You're, she's not your girlfriend with yeah. two kids. These no. kids have your name. They have the Godfrey name. Yes. You're not Dennis Rodman. <laughs> so what did you name the little boy? Uh, Max. Max. That's yeah. a, a very Jewy name. Yeah. <laughs> the name of the Godfrey. The name of the boy is Mr. Lucky. Well, <laughs> sh Slimy was uh, a little hard to spell. Did you have <laughs> Did you have your son circumcised? Yes. Now, yeah. Now, were you conflicted about that at all? Because sometimes I think it's barbaric. That, like, how did this? Whole, I don't know if you get introspective at all. Is I, he I, doing it for a, yes. a, a, yeah. a religious reason? Did you did, did you have a rabbi do it or did you have a Oh not that rabbi crap. No, you oh. had it done. You know how much hospital. a brisk cost? Yeah. <laughs> you had it done Then you a... gotta pay for cold cuts. You had it done in a hospital? <laughs> oh yeah. But a rabbi would have sang a beautiful song oh. while he did it. He had a brisk cost. <laughs> You know, you are legendary yes. for being cheap. Yes. I was afraid you were going to do the circumcision yourself. Yeah, with a butter knife. Now, you yes. know what happened? Gilbert had the brisk at the Funny Bone in Pittsburgh. He did a show for first. <laughs> I heard there was one story of some rabbi who got arrested he would do a brisk and he would bite off. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that the was old, Marv Albert. The yeah. old, <laughs> the old uh, and, and supposedly gave the kid herpes, actually. Oh. Right. Uh, because, you know, it, I guess there was some old tradition with these rabbis where they would actually bite off the... the, the really? Like cut it and then bite it off. It was some weird sect I, that did yeah, it. Yeah, you bit it. That's how you yeah. got it off. And then the, I, I think the story I read was that the kid got some sort of disease or something, or they were afraid he was going to get a disease, something something along those lines. But so so I'm just wondering, did you have any sort of discussion with your wife about this? Because I know you're, you're not religious. No. And why circumcise the kid? You know, when you think about it, the whole thing's sort of barbaric, right? Cutting off a piece of your penis? I mean, wh why do it if you're not religious? I don't. I guess because uncircumcised dicks look kind of weird. Yeah, you don't like the way they look. No. Yeah, you want them to look like you. Exactly. Yeah, you don't want things to, to look like Gilbert Gottfried. No. Yeah, you don't want things to look weird. I want a little smiley face. On it. <laughs> is he? Is he hung well like you? I know you're very large. Yes, yeah. I have an extremely big dick. Were you concerned about that when you had his son? Like, did you look at him nude and say, "Gee, I want"? Like, I know you've said your penis is not that big. Yeah. Uh, were you Were you worried that he was cursed with the same thing you had, or, or was he hung more like your wife? <laughs> <laughs> did you look at his penis when he was born and say, did, gee, I wonder if he has girth or did you look to see? I've never had a son, so I don't know. Yeah, see, see this is something that they that I heard from a nurse one time is that when guys look at their son's penis, they always, uh, well, first of all, they should be arrested, but... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you can take pictures of your son's yeah, yeah. to show me. Yeah. They say a <laughs> lot God. of these guys go, oh, my God, look at him. He's got a gigantic dick, you know. And, but they say, like, the dick, for some reason, on every baby looks big. Right. Well, because they're so tiny. Yeah. That they, yeah. They look so, big. But not only that, they're hormones that, that are in the mother's bloodstream at the time of birth that cause that. Well, thank God Gilbert's yeah. wife had one big dick in her. <laughs> <laughs> so did he have... Did, 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 when you looked at your son's penis, did he have better length or girth? Yes. <laughs> uh, did you, what did you observe? See, that's why I like being so short. It makes my dick look bigger. Yeah, it's like, yeah. When, a, it's like when a midget jerks you off. <laughs> Robin, you make a good point. Why don't we take those hormones that these women have when they give birth so that our penises can look bigger? Oh, you know what I mean? I you mean, just want to take cosmetic hormones. You say if there's a, a hormone that the woman releases when these babies are born to make their penises look big, <laughs> can't they take that hormone and rub it on my penis? <laughs> sure. sure. Well, now, I think if they were rubbing your penis, it would get big. Right. Now, Gilbert, how big is your daughter's penis? <laughs> she was well hung, too. So, so uh, it, it, do you like having a boy better than a girl? Is there a difference? I haven't figured it out yet. Right. You're not that Did involved. Did you like yeah, the yes. first kid and that's why you decided to have a second one i don't know my life just happens around me pretty much <laughs> now you don't wear contraception at all when you're with your wife you uh you always bear back uh yeah i guess so yeah so is there a chance you could have a third child and a fourth child i mean are you taking any precautions uh, well not not i don't i can't imagine having more than this i mean you have a small apartment with yes. garden with, <laughs> with lawn furniture in it i mean what are you going to do i mean with a have... cardboard box for a bed <laughs> yes. you'll have a bigger apartment after he makes eight grand at caroline's <laughs> That's right, you are going to Caroline's. See Gilbert Godfrey this Thursday night at 8 o'clock at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan. For tickets, go to carolines.com. For additional tour dates, go to gilbertgodfried.com. What's going on at gilbertgodfried.com? Uh, any big news over there? Oh. Have you seen it? <laughs> Do you know, are you selling something on there? Do you have some new item? Uh, yes, it's a very new item. It's only about five years old. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey, Dirty Jokes. Which, by the way, is funny. Have you ever seen it, yes, Albert? It's, it's really funny. You know, as good. a matter of fact, I had Jackie the Joke Man Martling on yes. the phone this morning, and he has an iPhone application yeah. where you can get his jokes right over the iPhone. <laughs> I'm wondering if you're thinking of branching out into I'll have that. to ask Artie about this. Yeah, he holds on <laughs> Gilbert could put his DVD on an iPhone, but he'd have to pay uh, Joey Bishop $80,000 for every joke. This is the best thing that ever happened with the Artie thing. Because when I used to ask him all the time, when I was first making the DVD... <laughs> And and Gilbert, it, would, it, Gilbert would call me up with his with his then girlfriend. Yes, because he knew I put out a DVD, which quite frankly was successful because I plugged it on your show. Okay, yes. so Gilbert's like uh, Gilbert's wife says, "Listen, I know your DVD was successful. Can me and Gilbert conference call you?" To talk about the business of DVDs. I said, sure. So then they used to call me. So. And, and then he, his advice was always like, well, you know, you should put a bunch of jokes on it, not just uh, one or two. Oh, and you use the ones that work really well, not the ones if, if, if bombs. Don't put those on. Oh, shit. Good and, advice. So then you have none on. And, that, <laughs> and the, the greatest part of the whole story is they started showing uh, the Dirty Joke DVD on, on, on Showtime. Right. <laughs> so I was here waiting backstage, and, and Artie walks by, and he goes, You know that uh, Dirty Joke DVD you did? It's on Showtime. How, how'd you get it on there? <laughs> and I, like, just hit the floor. <laughs> and, and, and Artie that... was like, You know, go fuck yourself. <laughs> and walks That's how Gilbert helped me back. <laughs> so... Gilbert, I said, you... Gilbert, can I have some advice now? And he went, <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, are you still on the Jay Leno show? I know that he ended his show. Now, Will you were, be going to prime time? You were a regular guest on there. And yes. You used to do comedy bits with him. Yes. When was the last time you were on his regular Tonight Show? Uh, that was just a few days ago. A few days really. ago. Yeah, like last on. week, I think I was you on. You were on last week? Yeah. You don't remember if I you were on? I don't remember exactly. I mean, it, it, was, it was pretty, uh, yeah, I think it was last week. 
I mean, I would assume you remember going to California yes, to do the yeah, show, right? Yeah, so it was might, last week, you, early you last week. You think that was yeah. you mean you are so busy and and yeah, with your I, schedule, I you got don't remember such a going hot Korea. You mean you don't remember <laughs> the day you were on the Tonight Show? Yeah, it was Mr. Week? Spock. I guess. Oh, you played Mr. Spock. Yes, I bet you were terrific. Yeah, I was great. Spock, <laughs> you're half Jewish. Remember? <laughs> Has Jay uh, indicated to you that he would like you to appear on his new show, his prime time show? Hasn't said anything yet. Nothing. So if he said it, Gilbert. But how yeah. would he sound? Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, I was just wondering. Uh, you know, uh, always, always fun having you. <laughs> Does he ever contact you personally? Does he ever say to you, gee, thank you, Gilbert, for all the years that you gee, came on my Gee, you're a wonderful guy. Yeah. 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 I'm talking to you. you I, I would you. guess he's never even no. had any personal interaction no, no, with you. No, no, no. Oh. That must make you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> After I just wanted that. to see how you're feeling. <laughs> Are you doing anything to keep your romance alive with your wife because... I know you had. Yeah, a he's not coming home. He's not coming home every night. I know you had a horrible sort of courtship with your wife. You never took her anywhere. Yeah. You never took her to dinner. No, you know. I think we went to McDonald's once. Yeah, I mean, but it's literally, I once suggested that Gilbert take his wife to a, a high-class restaurant. He looked at me like I was from Mars. Like, why would I do that? The next day, he called you up and said, "Is the Burger King on 38th yeah. Street open?" Are, are you are you <laughs> remaining interested in your wife sexually, or after the kids, do you notice a difference? I'll, I'll have to see now. You haven't had sex with her yeah. since your son? How oh. old is your son, Max? Uh, he, very, I mean, uh, just like days. Oh, you're yes, kidding. Yes, yes. Oh. Well, I thought he was 42. Yeah. Days, <laughs> days ago, That's... your wife gave birth. Yes. Were you there? Uh, I was there for the uh, first one, not for the second. <laughs> See, I, I like that idea of, like, I don't smoke, but I like the idea of the guy in the waiting room with the <laughs> cigarette pacing back like ricky forth. ricardo and yes. fred Merch. <laughs> was it the worst thing in the world to see the baby come out was that did it gross you out or is it not even that so much it's just that you just don't even want to be observed by doctors i, I don't want to be observed by doctors but i don't want to, want to be a coach. childbirth you right. don't want to be a coach and like help your wife out by saying I, romantic I, things to her i mean I, I imagine a very I, dysfunctional relationship i don't like childbirth even when it's like uh simulated in like Sitcoms. Right. Uh, uh, you, yeah. So when Jennifer Aniston had the baby, you didn't watch. Yeah. <laughs> like Gilbert yeah. wanted to be there for the birth of the second kid, but she wasn't born at Yuck Yuck in Toronto. <laughs> so did you wait in the in the waiting yes, room? You yes. did. Was your Much wife better? Was your wife upset with you? Like kind of disappointed? Like Gilbert, can't you be there for me just once? No. When I was in the waiting room for the first one, it's like. I was like, like getting dizzy, looking around the other direction, <laughs> and finally, like a do the doctor came over and put a wet towel around my neck, thinking I was going to pass out. You yeah. fainted like yeah. Ralph Cramden. <laughs> 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 I don't understand something. <laughs> Your wife must have said to you, Gilbert, it would be comforting to have you in there with me. Yes. Right? Yeah, but she learned that for the first right. time. And she be, knew not to even bother with and it. Be, and be honest. <laughs> are, are you going to get a paternity test to make sure it's yours? <laughs> No, I mean, why not? Why not be safe? I mean, do you ever sit, question your wife and say, is it possible this isn't my child? Why it looks like the UPS man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but, but okay, so now it's exciting. You have Max, and your yeah. daughter's name is uh, Lily. Lily. So yeah, you like Lily. Lily's yes. how old? Two? Uh, yeah. Does yeah. she know that you're her father? Like, does she call you dad? Daddy? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. So someone calls fact, you daddy. Yes, wow. yes. Wow. Okay. And yeah, you, so, you roll her yeah, around and One play kid with named her. Lily, one named Herman, uh, one named Eddie, <laughs> <and> Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> one named Carol. <laughs> Do you like being a dad? I mean, is it something you relish? Yeah, enjoy she, the kids. Yeah. Depends the on the day. Yeah. 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 It's hard, right? But yeah. Do you play with them? Do you interact <laughs> with them? <Yeah>. Do you? <laughs> no. At any time at all? This I'm saving all this for 60 minutes. <laughs> I imagine you're a very removed dad. I, yes. I, I would think that that would be your uh, your yeah. father was with you, and you will carry on the tradition. Does carry on have... the Godfrey yeah. tradition. Does right. he have I'm not little... paying for anything. Yeah. <laughs> a little room in the apartment that he stays in. Don't bother, Daddy. He's writing. I saw Max at a nursery steal some ketchup packets. <laughs> Who do you like better, Max or Lily? 
when it comes down to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, both. Sorry. All right, listen. Gilbert Gottfried is going to be this Thursday night at 8 o'clock at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan. For tickets, go to carolines.com. For additional tour dates, go to gilbertgottfried.com. Hey, Howard, I think... Um, will Gilbert teach his son to toss a ball and... <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> you He'll toss to... like Gary. Do you know how to throw a ball at all? Oh, I, I don't know any sports. Right. Yeah. So you're not really going to be involved in Little League or no, something like no. that. No, no. He threw out the first pitch once uh, at a woman's softball game. <laughs> Is there anything besides is there anything besides getting free coffee and water that you can teach your kids? That's getting a free syrup bottle. How to network with Bill Cosby on the set? By the way, your young son Max is yes. on the phone with us now, <laughs> making his first radio appearance. Let's talk to him. Okay, baby Max. Hi, how are you? When I grow up, I'm going to be an anti-Semitic racist. <laughs> All right, thank you. Hey, uh, I think is there any chance, Gilbert, that the baby is named after his father, Max Schmeling. <laughs> All right, Gilbert, so you're here with us. Do you want to stay and do the news with us? Sure, why not? All right. Yeah, we got till 2 o'clock. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Do you think you can control yourself? No, <laughs> I, no, he can't. Try to say the N word till 2 o'clock if you, you can. mean nigger? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Yes. I, no. Gilbert. Yes. <laughs> I picture you. They got one in the White House now. Did you hear? Oh, oh, sorry. Come on. Oh, okay. yeah, you went too far. Did you read the paper? Uh, okay. <laughs> Gilbert, are you are you really racist? Are you, is that what you're here to tell Doesn't sound it. When's the last time you went to a synagogue where you got to hear the rabbi chant? Bichnashina. Uh, okay. All right. Let's... Yeah. Why are we in the N-word here all of a sudden? <laughs> I, I, that's not, right. I mean, he went. He, yes. Dude, he took it far, man. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We're that's a take lie. A... I never say nigger. All right. Good, good for you. Uh, all right. We'll go. You, we're, you guys are taking me into a whole area. Hey, I'm not saying anything. All right. Di all right. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. It wasn't me, Mommy. It wasn't. No, no, don't bring up the N-word to him. Oh. It's, like bringing up, it's like bringing up Jews to Hitler. Right. <laughs> All right, look, let's take a break. Hey, Adolf, uh, the J word. It's good to see you. I like you. You mean Jew? <laughs> you mean dirty Jew? And we'll take a break and we'll be back. Okay. Right. What, did you have any kind of reception? As, as small, as minor as possible. Who was invited? Uh, no, no, nobody. Just like very immediate. What did Donald Trump get you for? <laughs> All right, listen, Robin is going to do the news in just a yes. couple of minutes. We're going to get an update from uh, Steve Langford from Howard 100 News. Yes. I know you're friendly with him. Very. And yes. he, he's your son's godfather, isn't yes. he? Yes. Steve Langford, come on in here and talk about how your Gilbert Gottfried's son's godfather. By the way, congratulations. Yes, we know. Uh, by the way, Steve, uh, congratulations on last night's programming. You were the host of John the Stutterer and the other guy, Sean. The, what are we calling him again, Robin? Shusha Sean. Hi, Sean. Hi, Register Sean. Hi, Register Sean. Okay. Shusha Sean. Uh, did, did you like the experience of being a host? Sure. You enjoyed it? Yeah, I mean, who I did tried you to feel, do my... Who did you feel won the debate? <laughs> That's a good question. I, you don't have an answer. I, I, you I, sat through a whole debate and you don't know who won. I really, I really no... couldn't tell you who won, but it was, uh, it was great. You have no opinion. Uh, who on had it? more facts to well, back you know, up their argument? Sean was... Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, Sean was pretty good. Sean, you like yeah. high register, Sean. All right, okay. You like Sean? We'll All right, let's go to Steve Langford for what's going on in the Howard 100 newsroom. And by the way, I remind you that Gilbert Gottfried this Thursday night at eight o'clock at Caroline's on Broadway in Manhattan. If you've never seen Gilbert, you must go see him now. He's on a tear. I mean, he's, I don't know. Ever since the second kid, he's unbelievably on fire. In his career. And you can see you can see Max Gottfried working at a car wash in fifteen years. <laughs> For tickets, go to carolines.com. For additional tour dates, go to gilbertgodfried.com. Will All Gilbert right. be handing down the... the... Shit jokes? Yeah. <laughs> Will you hand your shit jokes down to your son? Wow. Uh, okay, a guy is uh, fucking a uh, hooker. <laughs> do, you, do, you think, do you think he'll be the type of father who curses in the house? I mean, you have a very dirty act. Yes. Uh, do you think that, though, you will come home and try to be something other than a dirty comedian in front of the kids? Just yes. a dirty father? I'll be playing my DVD for him constantly. <laughs> do you think that you will tell your, when your son asks you what you do for a living, will you tell him some of your jokes? Will you sit him down and say uh, maybe a joke or two, a dirty joke? 
Okay, here's a clean one. A guy is fucking an arm of this girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then he throws her in the ocean yeah. and says, you're fucked now. Yeah. Steve Langford, go ahead with Howard 100 News. At this exact moment, dressed in a skimpy hospital gown, about to get stretched out on an operating table, Gary Delabate, set for the sort of surgery that has much of Stern Nation grabbing its crotch. Gary's cringeworthy, candid camera surgical exploration should, if all goes well, have him home around noon. Howard 100 News endeavoring to provide updates on Gary's colossally cruel kidney stone all day today. He's going through it right now. Do you know about this, Gilbert, at all? Oh, no. Gary had a kidney stone. And the kidney stone usually can be blasted with an ultrasound. This time the ultrasound didn't work. And they have to take a catheter with a camera at the end of it, stick it up his penis hole, Go all the way up and like kind of rotor rooter out this this kidney stone, and you know does anything sound worse to you? I mean, than a yeah. tube going up. Have you ever had anything like that? I I have. <laughs> have you ever had your penis in anything? Yes. <laughs> Seriously, have you ever see, had... See, I've, I've had, like, tubes in my penis, not not medical. Was that when you had your... <laughs> when you had your... Uh, uh, what, what was that? The, what, your appendix burst? Oh, yeah. Is that the reason you had it? Yeah, but the thing is, I've had... I, I was, like, unconscious when they first put it in. Then I woke up with this garden hose in my dick. Did it hurt? Uh, no, it felt weird. Yeah. It, it felt like you were always peeing in your pants, but you weren't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Is it true, Gilbert, that a lot of people choose to get catheters put in as an audience member at your show so they're asleep? <laughs> <laughs> so the catheter is now going into Gary as we speak mm -hmm. with a camera at the end of it. And don't ask me how this works, but they will actually go in and get rid of this kidney stone. And, you know, I keep thinking about Gary, and now that he's not here, I can talk about him because I never like to talk about somebody when they're here. <laughs> I don't understand this guy. You know, he's gotten very heavy. Yeah. And if I had a condition where I, wasn't sub I could get a kidney stone if I eat chocolate, if I drink, drink iced, iced tea, tea and coffee... Those don't think, seem like really difficult things to give up, but maybe the chocolate, but certainly coffee and iced tea you'd give up. I mean, if you knew that you're yeah. going to get these kidney stones from this, wouldn't you alter or change your diet around But somewhat? wait a minute, he was yeah. eating to the point that he was taking Tums, eight and nine things of Tums. Tums, yeah, that, that does You it. know, every day, and that's all calcium. Well, after seeing Gary's pitch, I, I, got, I have a theory. Another way you can get a kidney stone is getting blown by a guy with a kidney stone. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's no, going on. No, that's not with him. true. But the tongue. <laughs> the tongues. That, that means he's eating and getting this acid reflux or heartburn. So his his whole body is screaming out, "Change this diet." Uh, and yeah. instead, he takes something for it and keeps eating that way. Yeah. He, he always looked so healthy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he real. I mean, wouldn't you just be petrified of this? And wouldn't you just go on the strictest diet so that you like like uh, Ronnie, the limo driver, used to get kidney stones. He right. got them twice. He said that's it. He changed everything. He stopped iced tea. He stopped. Ronnie will tell. I asked Ronnie about this. He said it was so painful passing these Ronnie kidney stones. Ronnie was dying. Yeah. He looked like he was dying. He's afraid to to eat and drink certain things. Now, now this I just remembered. There's a certain kind of fish, <laughs> I guess in like Africa or somewhere. These tiny fish that if they'll swim inside your penis hole. That's, that's true. Small, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I don't go to Africa. So, Otherwise, <laughs> I would be there so every day. So, na nature is such a beautiful thing. No, that's the guy who played fish, Abe Vigoda. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Ronnie, talk to me about when you that's got... That's the only work he's getting now. <laughs> when you got your kidney stones, <laughs> right. what was it like for you? Because you changed your whole diet around Well, what that. happened, the first time I had it, um, it, it was I. Like, I was laid up for four weeks. And by the way, Gilbert, nothing's wrong with Ronnie. He dyes his beard. That's why it looks like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he, he hasn't turned into a magician. No. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not looking at Robert Goulet at 98. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ronnie, what I, I, I thought he's the devil in an old Twilight Zone <laughs> episode. Yeah. I, I, like, I, I kind of look like Sal now. Um, Robert Goulet was from Queens and 102 years old. It's a... Anyway, he looks like Jack Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the greatest. Jack Cassidy was not a bad looking. Yeah, man. I know who Jack Cassidy is. After the fire. Jack Cassidy now. After the fire. 
<laughs> Isn't he dead? <laughs> he burned up? He's dead. Yes. What happened? He when smoked you... a cigarette. <laughs> when you got your kidneys stung. It's, you're not going to be able to talk, I'm man. Glad when you, I'm being serious. When you got your kidney stone, that scared the crap out of you. I feel you, right? like Dude, you can I, like I, was, I was laid up for four weeks with that thing. Right. I was on I was on Demerol for four weeks. I used to wake up. I'd be laying in the middle of the floor, and I don't even know how I got there. So what are the things you're not That's, allowed to eat if you want to avoid kidney stones? Um, no chocolate. Right. Um, n no ca Nothing with caffeine. Like iced tea is real bad. Coffee, any of that kind of stuff. Uh, cold, any kind of colas, you know, soda. Right. Ronnie's like Liberace. He has an ugly beard. <laughs> <laughs> so there was nothing. Fuck you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, so, it looks like a disguise from one of the, one of the early Mission Impossibles. <laughs> <laughs> Where Ross Martin used to swipe on a beer. Are you fucked up or what over there? What's your problem, man? Ronnie, what's wrong with you? Ronnie, show him we're kidding, Ron. Take off the beard. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Gilbert, our secret word today was Russ Martin. <laughs> So well, I like to appeal to the kids uh, out certain, there. There's certain kind of like vegetables you're not supposed like to eat. What vegetables are you supposed to eat? Uh, well, a girl in a coma. Any, any, a, lot, a lot of green vegetables. Uh, Fred, and, you're the greatest. Um, That's weird because you think green vegetables would actually. Yeah, but they have something with antioxidants in them or something, right, right. and that causes kidney stones. What? Antioxidants don't yeah. cause kidney stones. Dr. Robin, listen. No, wait. Russ Martin wore the disguises in Wild Wild West. <laughs> yes. Who wore the uh, disguises up, in Michigan? Yeah. Yeah. Martin Landau. Fuck this shit. Yeah. Fuck you, man. Anyway. Wait you come outside. Yeah, Miley Cyrus like called in and corrected your reference. It's like high school. Ronnie's going to beat you up after, the, uh, after you get out of here. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, Ron. I'm fucking around. I don't get Lou after me. Uh, yeah, get Lou after me. It's the worst thing I'll ever do. So, anyway, my point is that Gary is, in a weird way, like... Can Ronnie stay in here? He's in a weird way not caring, I no? can see the oh, rubber the... band holding the beard on. Oh, <laughs> Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> well, look, he wants to look more youthful yes. by dying it. You know, it would be all gray otherwise. Yeah, he looks like a teenager. Right. By the way, everyone who was born after 1930 just turned the show up. You're saying you thought that... That Ronnie looked like a teenager with his dyed beard, so it's I, working, I guess. I, I thought you were bringing in the cats from High School Musical. <laughs> <laughs> See, dyeing the beard works. I look yeah. like Zac Efron, all right? <laughs> we brought in the cats from High School Musical, class of 1941. All right, Steve, what do you have for us? <laughs> I just spit water all over my up. Also today, the nine lives of fat cat high-pitch Eric, the purportedly penniless potbelly perp, managing to convince New York Housing Court he should get more time to pay his rent. Another court appearance about his looming eviction set for next week. Very good. And Captain Jenks and his tireless attorney, poring over the long list of clubs Jenks may have scammed. The first installment of money raised so generously by Artie Lang, set to cover payments to clubs that have filed criminal charges against Jenks. Other clubs will have to provide proof they were taken by Jenks. Howard 100 News has been asked to scrutinize the books to help ensure Jank's victims are paid back. And what do we hear for the baseball that went horribly wrong? The actual ball Gary threw or attempted to throw, now up for auction at CharityBuzz.com. So far, bidding is at a mere 650 bucks for the ball and Gary's T-shirt from that day. Proceeds to go to LifeBeat. Howard, by the way, I thought of the greatest idea ever. Yeah. Without, you know, it's some way to keep this from Gary, but... <laughs> I'm going to buy the ball and shirt. Oh, that's great, because I know Gary never wants to see that ball no, and shirt. No, I'm going to buy it, Howard, yeah. and I'm going to make a body cast the Gary with his face, <laughs> and I'm going to put the shirt on Gary, right. and hopefully we'll put this in the studio, and I'm going to put a big cock in Gary's mouth. Oh. <laughs> and one of the two balls is going to be the ball he threw out. Right, it's perfect. <laughs> So I want to. I, would, I don't give a fuck what the bidding gets to. Fans, don't bid on it. I want it. All right. Well, there it is. It'll be the Hall of Shame. Uh, what else? Anything, Steve? That's Jack, a good one. Jackie's Joe Con tonight, seven Eastern. Howard one hundred one, and at midnight, the Man in the Moon, Riley Martin. Stern News. Call eight seven seven H one hundred tip or email Howard one hundred news at Sirius dash radio All right. Let's go to Marianne from Brooklyn. Wants to say hi and say hi to Gilbert Gottfried. Oh, Gilbert, you're cracking me up. I'm glad you're back. Welcome back, Howard. I hope you're all right, Howard. I've been worried about you, but. <laughs> And not necessarily is it your body, it could be random. And I had a cat, uh, you could... Uh, I, I'm just let me get my thoughts 
That's oh, good luck. Your thoughts. <laughs> have, you, have you heard this room? No, I Oh, you could, you don't have, you could just randomly get a kidney stone. That was my and, uh, uh, Not only, I mean, her phone is breaking up all over the place. I'd rather have a kidney stone than listen to her for two more seconds. <laughs> Marion from Brooklyn is saying that uh, she... Yeah, most people say everything is random. She sounds they uneducated. It's random. <laughs> you that the kidney stone is random. You have to get a catheter in your bipolar. In my medical opinion. <laughs> Look, I'm no doctor. But... You're kidding. <laughs> Brian, you're on the air. Hey, Howard, how you doing? Hey. I'll tell you what, um, Artie, I, I, you know, I've, I've loved you, but you're killing me. I, you know, you got this phony laugh that's going on. You're talking over everybody. I, you're like shot out of a cannon. I, I don't understand it. You're, 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 I, are you losing your edge? What's going on? I mean, I'm it's... losing my edge. <laughs> I said the N word eight times. That's very edgy. What are you in the clan? Bobo, you're on the air. Yeah, how you doing there, Howard? Hey. Over the span of your great career, uh, who do you really want to interview before you hang up the headphones? I've interviewed Gilbert Gottfried. Who else would yeah. you want to interview? <laughs> he wants Gilbert Gottfried and maybe, uh, you know, Chick Capri. <laughs> I, wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind interviewing Octo Mom, I'll tell you that. I really would love to get inside her fucking convoluted head. <laughs> Too many people uh, have been inside her. And probably my, my, I think before I leave radio, the one person right. I really want to interview is an 18-year-old Max Gottfried. <laughs> You can tell me what it was like growing up in Gilbert's house. He'll be plugging now, his book by then. Yeah. Why will he be here? What will he have done? Uh, triple homicide. Yeah, I, think, I think the only way to do that, you have to do a remote from a homeless shelter. Uh, yeah, one more. Yes. Uh, if you didn't choose radio as a career path, just what would you think you'd be doing like today? I would be like, uh, a social worker. Driving. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be helping people. Yeah. I'd be working in a prison, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what I'd be doing. He'd be Jay Leno. Yeah. You wouldn't take yeah. Bobo's job, driving instructor? Yeah, a driving yeah, instructor with a bad wig <laughs> so the kids could tug on it? Yeah. Yesterday's my first day of retirement. Well, how'd it go? Good, man. Just working a few days a week. That's what are you doing now on those few days? Um, Cutting his wife's body down after she hung herself. <laughs> and then the rest of the time I just uh, hang out. You know? All right, let's go to John. John Kishman took us around. Hi, you're on the air. Howard. Yes. Why do you ask that midget retard limo driver any medical questions? Well, actually, you mean Gilbert? I wasn't, I wasn't asking Ronnie a medical question. I was saying he had kidney stones, and I know he he got he he hasn't had one attack since since he changed his diet around and he listened to the doctor. So oh. I, I'm suggesting that maybe Gary needs to do that. Oh, didn't he get divorced and having more sex now? But that has something to do with it. No, I don't. I don't think it's that. I, I think he actually changed his diet around. I mean, I'm not kidding you. I I, I know it has to do something with that. Well, what? Uh, I think I think pussy helps, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't pussy know. helps everything, man, yeah, except kidney stones. Uh, that could actually make a kidney stone move. And it's, it's fun. You, you'd get could in it? trouble. Do you think it's it could? Teasing. It's fun to pass a kidney stone into a pussy. <laughs> yeah, I love to. I love to bukkake a chick and have my stones come out. Yes, you got better in the face with my stones. Those who have never sinned, bukkake the first stone. Uh, Michael, I, I would pass it into the palm of my hand. Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Real quick, and then we'll get to John, and then we'll get to Rob. Into a blow-up doll. Oh, Hi. I mean, hey. I, the last time I moved cocky to chicken past the stone, I broke her nose. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> what were the damages? <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. She looked like Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> I got what arrested. Happened here? What happened? Oh, Artie, Artie, shut the fuck up. Okay, buddy, I'm sorry. Holy shit, Artie, are you fu I'm fucking, uh, um, are you back on coke? Yeah. Artie, <laughs> thanks for, thanks, tell your mom thanks for selling it to me. <laughs> All right, let's go to John Hines. John, you're on the air with your... What do you call it? Wrap-up show. Every day at 11 o'clock. Everyone loves the yes. wrap-up show. That guy's, mom, that? that guy's mom sold me coke while she was blowing me. Oh. <laughs> did, you have, did you ever go on the wrap-up oh, yes, show? Yes. You've been on it. Yes. So you know what yeah. a, an excellent host it's, John Hines is. It's very exciting. Talk about your experience. Oh, well it was quite an honor. Yeah. <laughs> you got on there and John would ask you questions and then you would answer them. Is that how it worked? Was yes. That the format? It, was, it was so exciting. You can uh, imagine what it's going to be like when you do your first letterman. <laughs>
<laughs> Go ahead, John. Uh, African American Penn State student Aisha and Steel- by African American no. you mean? No, no, no. no. That's no. Not the- <laughs> Stop it. It's not necessary. You're a brilliant comment. It really isn't that. Go ahead. Uh, I'm going to leave. <laughs> and Spearmint Rhino dancer Stacy were both approved for Playboy, right. but only after split decisions from our, from our esteemed panel of judges, Ralph, Ham Hands Bill, and Amy Fisher's husband, Lou Bellera. By the way, Gilbert was uh, taking pictures with the girls. I think he was having a good time. You like uh, you like taking pictures with those Playboy girls, right? Sure, it's the closest I can get to a woman. Yeah, you yes. look very happy. Yes. He hopped, too. He yeah. jumped right oh, off that yes. couch. I yeah. Saw that. I yeah. Saw that. But I, I think to them it was that kind of thing. They had a picture taken with you, and then it's like, oh, he's he's there, I guess. We... <laughs> they seem to be genuinely excited yeah. by your presence. <laughs> hey, why do you have on Adam Rich from Eight is Enough? <laughs> <laughs> what else you got going on? We'll discuss the judging and examine the controversial decisions, how Ham Hand's Bill showed his sensitive side and had a plethora of suggestions for judging the girls, how Ralph broke out the laser pointer and spotted flip-flops during his critique, if there's any contestant that Lou would ever give a thumbs up to, and was he getting upset by Artie's comments, and has Howard put an end to the Ganji credo of always having the girls wear solid color swimsuits? Yeah, by the way, I check with Doug Goodstein on that. He says there's absolutely no rule that the girls have to wear solid swimsuits. Uh-huh. He doesn't even know where Ganji got that from. So Ganji has to wear solid swimsuits. Yeah, from now on. Yeah. Uh, what else? Plus, Gary is out today getting his stone removed with a camera up his penis. Howard is pissed he didn't get taped from the end of last night's debate between John the Stutterer and High Register Sean. Ben Stern continues to give Howard lessons on the New York Times and Gary's appearances on TV. Howard knows he couldn't be a late-night TV talk show host because there would be no guests on his program. Jackie has an iPhone app, doesn't know why he doesn't want to be roasted, and disputes that he always gives an automatic no. The reason Jackie doesn't want to be roasted, it's because it's our show. Robin hit it on the head. Robin, say what you said. Oh, God, that was so many hours ago, I Do you said. Do you remember? That Jackie, oh, God, now. You hit it so perfectly. I know. Jackie was a comedian who was here for 17 years. <laughs> I remember Jackie. I'm trying to remember what I, I said about said Jackie. That I don't ja- want to be roasted. <laughs> Jackie just likes to say no to us. That was what said, you said. I, I Fuck I Howard. Was like, I'm, Howard. Not, <laughs> I'm not doing it for you. Right. I'm not doing it for you. In other words, Jackie would be roasted in a sewer. <laughs> With the shittiest comics on the planet, he would That's do right. anything. Right, no, Jackie? Not hardly comedians. Jackie would do like a movie if a guy took out a video camera and wrote a script on a, on a garbage bag. Jackie would do that. In fact, he was uh, just in a movie with a bunch of whack packers. Yeah. But but he but yeah. if I ask him to do anything, he goes, I'm not doing that for you. I'm much bigger without Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Howard. I'm so much bigger without him. He played a diner yeah. last night. He was holding me back. Yeah, but but I'm telling you, it's something about when I ask him to do something, he doesn't like it. I'm that, not doing that for you. I'm not doing that do for you. Do you know I wake up every morning thanking God I'm not on the show? <laughs> 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 right, what and, else and I, and Jack, I actually heard him say that. <laughs> and, and Jackie got roasted. The only comics, you're right, the only comics that would show up would be like shitty female comedians. <laughs> like Elaine Boozler or Dane Cook. I think he has something with me, though. He doesn't want to do it for me. Right. Because, like you said, if it was the Friars or anybody else calling, he'd go, oh, sure. Right. But the moment your name is in, it's like, no. Yeah. You know, on my radio show, I get much more listeners. (laughs) What else you got? Ganji, are you here? He comes up with these ideas. Why would you tell these girls they need to wear solid color uh, bikinis? Here's here's what it comes down. I mean, this is a modern 2009. Yeah, so, okay, so here's what it comes down to. The camera on my computer can shoot multicolored bikinis. We can't shoot multicolored bikinis. Here's what it comes down to. Yeah. Tight stripes, moire. Right? So, <laughs> get out of here. speaking English, <laughs> Mike Ganji, moron. They make they, they make a, they make Gange. a pattern that looks. The, the, wait, the you're not even listening to the, me. The, let me, I let hear me explain. What you're saying. You asked me to come uh, in right, and explain, so let me explain. Oh, boy. <laughs> Until we heard so, you. Listen, it was an old rule that just kind of was always in effect. Right. It was one of those things. It was yeah, from, from the 30s. Time. Yeah. It wasn't from the 30s. It was from when we were on regular TV. How come Doug yeah, doesn't the 30s. know about it? Yeah, Doug doesn't know about even it. Doug even knows about it. Everybody knows about it, but they're all. Fucking liars and things don't moray in HD. The show is shot in HD. So, First of all, it's so a bikini. Minute, it's so a tiny right. little piece of so fabric. It's not, it's not, like not a gonna... big shirt. Can. Yeah. So, but you think the pace would have said something three years ago when we were in HD? You know, and but Kenji, anyway, listen, you think you know rule. about TV? I could care less anymore. No, 
I, I don't know, give a shit. They I can you, wear a suit of armor. I know you want to. I'm going to tell you what goes on. That's right. a worse suggestion. I want to tell you. No, wait, listen. I, I got to tell no, no, you. No, no, before you say anything, listen. Here's what goes Just on. Just listen for a second. I know wait, you want to be a tell. No, you listen to me uh, it because you need to learn. It was my rule. It was a. It was. It was something that the technical crew had asked me to convey to everybody. A hundred years ago. Yeah. So it was a hundred. So Will happened to follow so along with those rules for a long time. It's not like every day I go to Will. Hey, make sure. Will, when was the last time I said you actually do it? No, I'm not shutting up. When was the last time? I actually physically said, hey, make sure somebody doesn't wear stripes. It was an old rule. It was part of don't wear logos, don't wear tight stripes. It was an old rule. Right. It just never okay. went anywhere. I listened to you. Will you listen to me? Yeah. Okay. You desperately want to be an expert. I'm not <laughs> trying to be an expert. I was passing along right. somebody else's request. Right. That's it. Okay. I know you want to be a big television guy. Okay. There's also something with logos. He doesn't want a logo on the bikini. Meanwhile, don't bikinis don't have anything, a logo. But listen, it's yeah. the one people that we actually call and tell them what to wear. Uh, so it's the one time, to me. you know, I otherwise you we wanted, got... I, you know what it is? If I was you, I'd want to seem like I knew something. <laughs> I would be the same way. I understand where you're at. Ganji de Cordova. He wants to seem like he's really in TV. Right, the fact too. is, listen, we're all learning about TV here. None of us here know about TV. Of course. You know what I mean? We're, right, we're all it's a joke. Right. Right. It's a right. joke. You get it? It's a goof. Right. I get it. I get it. Right. We're all I a get. joke. We're a step above a guy holding a handheld camera. You understand? I, I get it. All right. You don't know anything about TV. You know right. what I know. I, we both watch TV. Right. I know that the keys moray. You know that? You, you say that I don't know anything about TV, but I know that bikinis moray. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, Gilbert. Less is moray. <laughs> listen, I know Gilbert equals ready to death. <laughs> That's what I know. You know, it's funny. It's... Don't you open your mouth to me. Bikinis moray on camera. It's funny. One of the guys came in here. sounds like a month one, one of the, One of the guys came in here and said to me during the commercial, you know, bikinis moray. <laughs> So I guess somebody said bikinis more back there. Now everyone bikinis more. What does it mean, by the way? More 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 means, more if you see stripes, an old television show, because it wasn't so blurry, more no, they, they would they would appear to be moving in a yeah. sense. When something's too tight, a pattern's too tight, it jumps around. It, it, more, it, it, I don't ever watch the old That's Sid Caesar show. Yeah, <laughs> on the yeah, Jackie yeah, Gleason Mr. show. Gangi yeah. learned the word more somewhere, <laughs> and now he's Mr. More. Yeah, in fact, you know what? From now on, Mr. More. From now on. Maybe you don't know about TV, but I know all about how bikinis more. From now on, your name is Moray. It's no longer Ganja. You got you're a new not Ganja. Okay. You're Moray. <laughs> it's the new Baba Boy. Like I, I watch Ganji because you know I'm a big Moray. I like, I like Ganji, but I watch what he's doing. Uh, and and, and Ganji even likes to use. Television terms. Television like, terms. He like, came in here to show everything. Ganji, Ganji, Ganji uses television terms like, I'll hear him go, uh, that's a hard out. <laughs> <laughs> What's that mean, Ganji? Yeah, what does that mean? It, was, it, it meant that that was the last possible time that we could be in that place. Can't you just say we have to be done at 9 o'clock? No, it's a hard out. Everybody else understood what I meant. It's a hard out, Moray. <laughs> I you can't know, get a hot out. What other television terms do you use? I'm having trouble getting a hot out. <laughs> what else do you I have? need Viagra. I can't get a hot out. <laughs> How about mosaic? You want that? A good a mosaic? <laughs> yeah, mosaic. What does that uh, refer to? That's when we uh, blur something. You I know, see, you see mosaic. Okay, yeah. so you know, so I know what a mosaic is. So don't tell me I don't know TV. All right, so you know, you know some television terms. And I respect right. that. I, I like that you're learning words. Right. That I have... know TV. I watched one day at a time. I like that you're learning words. You know. Would you ever consider putting a mosaic on a moray baby? <laughs> If it was that bad, maybe we might have to. Without a logo. <laughs> and, and I know you, I've heard you use the word jump cut. I hear you. Yeah. I hear you around it's here. a jump cut. Well, I see, know what a jump cut is. And Ganji can't even jump. <laughs> see, what happens too, Ganji was complaining about, if something does moray, then Ganji's got to go in a mosaic and then take some more time. And he doesn't no, have no, to no, spend the time doing it. No, no, no. That was somebody wore a big logo. First right. logo. <laughs> I haven't heard the word moray since the queer eye guys took me out. <laughs> 
All right, Dan, I respect right. what you're saying. I think we're, oh, I, we're Dean. past it. Oh, Just tell the girls to wear a hot bikini. You feel safe saying that the girls safe. can wear whatever bikini they want. Absolutely. Okay, because if, except if they, they wear a big logo. They can wear a big logo. They can wear whatever they want as long as I get a hot out. <laughs> you, won't, you won't restrict them anymore, eh? <laughs> All right, no go. logos. All right, we've no had logos. our fun. No logos. And I respect what you do. Did you have fun, Dan? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to the Lincoln Tunnel and get me a whore. <laughs> All right, do me a favor. Put stripes on Genji's. I, I used to watch Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put stripes on Genji's bald spot. Genji is such a bore. <laughs> All right, let's get to Robin in the news. Robin, go ahead. Susan Boyle, the woman right. who became world famous after her first appearance on Britain's Got Talent. She more is now in a mental hospital. I love that that show drove her nuts. She finished second. You know, you realize how and well... And then they had to take her right to the loony bin. You realize how well Gilbert handles fame. He never had to go to the loony bin. Yeah. They Listening to her was a real chore, eh? <laughs> in treatment for exhaustion, the uh, sun tablet wow. inside her condition has an emotional breakdown. So uh, there you go. She almost walked off the show before she can walk. It was that, over. that would have been a, a hard off. <laughs> That's true. So you're learning television service. She don't give you a hard on, but she'll give you a hard off. <laughs> Gilbert, we need a hard off. <laughs> So, uh, we wish her well. All we right. may need the jib. <laughs> she stands to make a lot of money. She's world famous already. Get it together, lady. I think that she's not going to make as much money as people think because they're starting to realize that she's a, a disturbing, you know, sort of looking woman. It, well, this is, With yeah. an emotional problem. And, yeah, she can sing well, but uh, so can a lot of people. Gilbert's world famous. They don't make shit. <laughs> There's no money in this world, fame. No. Yeah, talk, she, to, talk she, to Amy Fisher. Are you... Uh, she kind of strikes me like Jim Neighbors. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. It's a weird thing. The yeah. reason we are so fascinated with her, I pointed this out yesterday, you're exactly right, that, the you know, you see this horrible-looking woman step on stage, and you assume she can't sing, and then she suddenly sings well, and she sings this bizarre operatic kind of stuff like yeah, Jim Neighbors used to do. It's not only just the it's singing like, I don't well, think anybody singing thinks beautifully. Jim... Yeah. There's nothing beautiful about her except his <laughs> voice. Right. Like, I don't think anyone who knows music is honoring the works of Jim Neighbors no. when he sings. <laughs> By no. the way, you're wrong, Gilbert, because, and it's very relevant, MTV's doing a huge Jim Neighbors weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right after that Frank Fontaine. <laughs> because he would come out... He would come out as like a retard, this Jim yeah. Neighbors, and then suddenly he was, you know, gone from Gomer Pyle to a guy who could sing. Right. And it was Frank, Gomer Pyle. Frank Fontaine used to do that Fontaine. when he was yeah. crazy. Crazy Guggenheim. Why don't you sing for us, crazy? Gilbert. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and hurry, the bonnet. <laughs> then you go, oh, this guy's great. <laughs> crazy Guggenheim. Yes. It's the dichotomy. Have you watched television since 1958. Gilbert's going to do that impression on the hills. Like. <laughs> what do you watch on TV now? Do you I, watch it at all? No, I just I bring out my kinescopes. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Max. Watch Jack Paul. <laughs> Apparently when uh, Gilbert was hiding out in the library, there was no television set. <laughs> All right, Robin, what else is in the news? Well, I, I, Max, look, Zero Mostel's doing a special. <laughs> Are you pissed off about the Obama's date night in New York? Oh, yes, as don't as say I that. Am. <laughs> am I pissed off about yeah, it? Because oh, do you realize they went to a restaurant here, right. and everyone at the restaurant had to be searched? I didn't know that. And then they went to a show, and everyone at the show had to be searched. That happens when I go to show. Hey, let me ask you something. But I was the president. Oh, they don't, they don't, <laughs> you can't search me. I was the president. Searched. They don't have. In other words, if I'm at a restaurant and the president shows up, I, 
don't know the president's coming. So even if I want to be a kook and I want to do something to the president, <laughs> how would I know to plan that? Imagine being so kind as to tell me what the specials are. <laughs> I was saying this to somebody the other day, and then it occurred to me, yeah, but then you got these random uh, nutcases like... They uh, don't got chicken here! Yeah. 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 parody man who carry knives in their regular lives. I thought this was less miserable. I can uh, hear yeah. I have your you watermelon salad. I can't hear a thing. Who the hell is Frankie Valley? All right, well, let's move on. The show's been officially hijacked. All right, go ahead. Why is Sandra Bullock doing her first nude scene at 44? Who the hell knows? <laughs> Oh, she a white woman. That's what they do. There's the white devil. No, what, what, what is the movie? When these girls are are starlets, they don't do new. Music. It's called another shit Sandra Bullock movie. It's called The Proposal. Yeah, that sounds great. It opens June 19th. Do you think she has a good body? She said she hit the gym. Yeah. And worked out. She ain't got no ass. <laughs> so who knows? But this is, you know, the, you know, she's now taking off her clothes to get people to come to the. So movie. would you say it's because she is older that she needs to do something to boost up the box office? She might be smelling the end. Is that the I kind of thing? I tend to think that whenever they start leading with the nudity as right. their promotion, you that know, the movie sucks. Sometimes when people get desperate, they get naked. In fact, Gilbert yes. is naked <laughs> right now. She ain't it, done nothing good it, since it, Hope Float. <laughs> Are you a Sandra Bullock fan, Gilbert? I, I what well, you know now what this gets me is that every single actress who uh, is against nudity, after they've had a few kids and their careers in trouble, then they start to going. Uh, so you are yeah. angry about this? Yes, yeah. I'm very angry. Right, listen, you've got to calm down. Yes, I can't stand it any You're longer. You're the father of two. No, now. no, I'm angry. I don't want to send you to the loony bin. <laughs> Somebody better kill that white woman. <laughs> She killed got, that naked white woman. She was good in the Sisters of the Yaya Brotherhood. <laughs> but that's the last fucking thing she did that with any good. Okay. Why, this is the best movie since Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. <laughs> Sisterhood under the Tuscan sun. For Elliot Spitzer to come out and start doing interviews, the timing was not right. Now, right. Spitzer's a black <laughs> Alex Spitzer is now in the paper again, and why? Because they're wrapping up that uh, Madam's case. Right. Well, now, hello there, Madam. And now they're revealing that he used a lot of hookers. Ashley <laughs> Dupree wasn't his only hooker, and he took hookers to at least three states. Could I bring your carriage around, Madam? <laughs> I've got to make water. Oh, God. This is crazy. Well, that's right. What can I tell you? I try to take you to the stove, Miss Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, you say. Anyway, so now they're detailing that he used a lot of hookers. He had an elaborate way of paying because he wanted to hide who he was. And the woman actually recognized him from television. She didn't know who client number yeah, was. Yeah, that's the coolest guy ever. And one day she's watching the news, and there's the guy who likes to have sex in socks giving a press conference. Sex in socks? Uh, <laughs> uh, Hold that matter! You mean it takes his shirt off? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they are saying he used a lot of hookers, not just Ashley Dupree. He puts cocks in socks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> he puts cocks in Ashley Dupree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, they, uh, this woman took it upon herself to do a survey of some of the, some of the bigger chain restaurants to see how they're doing in terms of... You mean of like Popeye's? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go see the specials at Red Lobster. Oh, oh, oh God. the president. They got fresh shrimp. What the woman discovered was you can end one meal at a TGI Friday's or a Red Lobster. That's too fancy for me. Gilbert, thank you. All right, we get it. We got the joke. Go ahead. She said you could have all the calories for one day and yeah. one meal. We got it, Gilbert. You do a perfect impression of the president. She said that what used to happen when you go to some of these restaurants is you could order the chicken parmesan or right. the macaroni and cheese or something. Pasta, mom. <laughs> oh, Fried chicken parmesan. Thank you, guys. Okay. You. You're, you're uh, killing. All right, you're uh, killing. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, she says... Keep all killing three you. Of yeah. Those, yeah, you all are. three of those will be on your plate. No you know, kidding. but that's what they're doing. They give you three entrees and breadsticks yeah. and a salad. 
Okay. <laughs> so they're literally killing you when you go to yeah, the right. restaurant. She says there's no limit to the deep fat frying, the cheese covering everything. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is with you, man? Uh, <laughs> give me that deep fried Ryan. Uh, Robin, right. could you do a story about Le Cirque? <laughs> right. The mayor of Los Angeles seems to have a, you know, they have, some people have a type of woman they like. Yeah. He likes white women. <laughs> His name is, uh. Who doesn't? <laughs> Good Lord, help me. <laughs> Antonio Villagaragos. Yeah. And Antonio he's now... Villagaragos. <laughs> hey. You know who's a hot white woman? Tony Fields. <laughs> he's dating an, a Los Angeles television reporter. And that's two years after an extramarital affair with another local newscaster ended his 20-year marriage. Right. So he hooked up with another <laughs> Just an interesting thing that goes on with him. Right. Conan O'Brien did his last show last night. Oh, God. Last show last night. It might be more his than first and show. last. So what happened he on his, his first, first show? show last night. Right. Taking over the reins of the Tonight Show from Jay Leno. And during the first minutes of the show, he took time to thank his predecessor, 1-4. All right. That's very generous of him. Let's one see. four. Hold on. One four it is. I want to acknowledge somebody, a very good friend of mine, a true gentleman, a very gracious man, a man who hosted this show for 17 years, took very good care of this franchise. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all give it up for Mr. Jay Leno. He did it. Yeah. yeah. So he gave Jay a shout out. Still really odd to me that. That whole transition went down when Jay was number one in the ratings. I'll never even understand that. I, I is think that? this is going to go down in history as one of those real boneheaded moves. Do you do? Do you TV. think it's going to like yeah. the ratings are going to go down? I I don't know what's going to happen. It, look, it just seemed like they made the decision and then immediately afterwards went, "Oh, I think we did something stupid." You mean like Gary deciding to book you today? <laughs> oh. Did you did you do you watch those shows? You don't watch the late night shows, do you? No, no. no. Not even when you're on. No. No. All right. He doesn't watch free TV? No. <laughs> Will Farrell was the first guest, and he sang a song last night, 1-5. All right. Let's hear that. Though I try to hide my feelings, they always seem to show. Then you try to say you're leaving, yeah, okay. and I always have to say no. Okay, Tell me why. Can we just, can we stop it? Ha, ha, ha. What? This is it's just what? odd to me that this is not a goodbye show. This is the <laughs> this is the first show, the first Tonight Show. It's Conan O'Brien. It's not a. It's not a. No, no. Look, I, it's a goodbye. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm pulling for you, man. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but this whole thing's a this whole thing's a crapshoot at best. <laughs> you know? All right, maybe he's right. I wonder what's going to happen there. Well, I don't so know. Now it's we get to see. We get to see. <clears throat> Why do you bail on a show that's number one? Weird. That's the weirdest thing. <laughs> Here we go. As president, I would never bail on the show. All right. I'm the number anyway, one man in the country. John Hine did a little survey. We were really reading Linda St uh, Stacy's um, review. Right. And uh, he did a survey of around the country, and apparently Conan got all positive reviews except for Linda. Right. For his first show. So uh, there you go. So good luck, Conan. It's. Uh, now your era. It's no soul train. <laughs> <laughs> Criticism has already emerged over President Obama's plan to General Motors. <laughs> At the National Press Club in Washington, former Vice President Dick Cheney says politics will likely interfere with decisions necessary for the company. How one, come this uh, Dick Cheney's come to life all of a sudden? You don't hear from him for eight years. You know, you never, you never. He's everywhere. What's going on? I don't understand it. I think because the Republican Party is in such disarray. They have nobody to speak out. Absolutely. My girlfriend's name is Disarray. <laughs> <laughs> They're in Disamore. <laughs> All these political pressures come to bear. Um, and decisions begin to be made not for economic reasons or for business reasons, but rather to appease certain political interests. The vice president or former vice president says that General Motors would be better served by going through bankruptcy without the help of the government. Hmm. He also came out and changed his position on gay marriage. 
Funny how that works when you have a gay daughter. It's like, <laughs> like the only time the guy can kind of come out with something that's fairly reasonable is because his own daughter's gay. That's but it's the only not reason. even like that. He kept that stance until he got out of office. Right. So he didn't even care about his kid as long as he's in office. Yeah, I mean, when he could have done something about it and spoken out about it when he was a, the vice president, that yeah. he wouldn't do. So now yeah. he gets out of office and he has a change of heart. Two, four. All right. Let's hear that. You all sort of woke up. <laughs> this guy, Dick Cheney, you couldn't find him. They didn't, they didn't even know there was a vice president. You know, for a while they were afraid there was no vice president. <laughs> now it's the right of his daughter marries a gay guy. It's, it's unbelievable to me that this guy woke up on the one issue because his daughter's gay. She probably fucking pounded the shit out of him at home. He probably couldn't take it. Anymore. I hope. <laughs> Believe me. Well, I think, um, you know, freedom means freedom for everyone. And, uh, Look at this guy. Suddenly. Uh, as many of you know, uh, one of my daughters is gay. And um, something that, uh, that uh, we've lived with for a long time in, in our family. She's the one daughter I'm willing to send to Afghanistan. <laughs> That's why you started the Iraq war, so you could send her off. Honey, I'm getting a lot of shit. You have to go. He did say that these are uh, state issues and not federal issues, so the federal government should stay out of it. Meanwhile, same-sex marriage advocates are making their push again here in New York the sixth state in the nation to legalize gay marriage, or that's what we would be if, uh, Mar if uh, New York passes such legislation. Right. Governor David Patterson says he'll continue to lobby for it. 110. All right, 110. Our governor, hold on. Well, I'll be going back to Albany later, and we're down to the last three weeks of session. So I will be talking to state legislators about that and all the other pieces of legislation we'd like to see pass this year. I hope it passes, because in 18 years I'd love to see Michael Jackson's son Prince marry Max Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gilbert, would you be upset if any of your happens. children were gay? <laughs> if. Would you care? <laughs> you feel they're already gay? Absolutely. <laughs> Hello, how's your son-in-law? <laughs> well, we'll see what happens with Gilbert that. Gilbert not saying anything. <laughs> no, he doesn't, he doesn't want to think about it. Yeah, it's you don't know too from scary. That. Yeah, it's not, you don't know from that. Yeah. yeah. If your son came home and said, Dad, look, I have to talk to you, I'm gay. You just was like, I don't want to talk about You'd that. You'd say, suck my cock. <laughs> I'm just hoping he has a drug overdose before then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> your baby hasn't had any gay tendencies yet. Yes. <laughs> Has he had a drug addiction yet? <laughs> All right, let's go back to Robin. Robin, uh, anything else in the news? How yes, uh, Air France flight that disappeared off the radar yesterday. Yes. Uh, several countries have joined. Where'd that plane be at? Uh, How does Gilbert get commercial work and we can't? <laughs> have uh, joined the, the search to try to find uh, what happened. <laughs> they think that because that area has so many storms that it was hit by... Th you know, lightning, and that probably caused the electrical problem that took the plane down. Um, the president of France had to meet with uh, the family members and say, you know, we don't think we're going to find anybody. Good Lord, I, I, I hate flying. Do you fl do you, you don't like flying? Do oh you? no. Are you scared when you're on a plane? Not, stories like this where yeah, it just disappears. Yeah, that's too scary. Like your career. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no reason for it. We can't locate Gilbert Gottfried's career. It got hit by lightning. <laughs> President of France is meeting with your family. Yes. <laughs> what else, Rob? But anyway, they uh, say they did. They think they found some debris. Yeah, uh, horror scene. Uh, some debris. <laughs> and they will be trying to uh, determine, you know, what actually went on. So bad story there. I don't. I don't. You know, like. That is a scary plane story. The yeah. plane just disappeared. Right. Disappeared. <laughs> Hundreds turned out for a rally in New York's Union Square last night to remember a prominent Kansas abortion doctor who was shot to death this weekend. Planned Parenthood stayed to the event to uh, pay respect to Dr. George Tiller, who ran one of the three late-term abortion clinics in the nation. Here's New York City Council Speaker Christine Quinn, who attended the rally and spoke about the doctor. One it's second. unbelievably important that we stand here tonight and we thank him. We send our prayers to his family, and we send a message to the horrible criminal people who did this. Hmm. 
the 67-year-old Tiller had been attacked several times in the past, including having his clinic bombed in 1985. They're now saying the man who perpetrated this crime has mental problems, which surprises no one. Right. But his family said they never thought he'd take it that far. Yeah. They bombed the guy. What else you got? How long are you supposed to stay out of work when you discover that your wife has cancer? I mean, like, this Gilbert? is an issue. Yeah. A day and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, you know, when when John Edwards was running for president, you thought it was ridiculous that he should continue his campaign after announcing that his wife had a recurrence of her breast cancer. Yeah, it was crazy because he's got young kids and stuff. And then all of a sudden, now you find out that he was having an affair and everything. So, it makes so he sense. might as well have stayed away from her. Right. In fact, that's why he stayed away. But most guys, if you're running for president and you're a United States senator, and then you find that your wife's having cancer, right. and it's like, she, in fact, it's the kind of cancer that's going to kill you, uh, you know, which was a pretty strong indication. It, it it seems to me that you might be needed at home for yeah. a couple of, you know, <laughs> maybe running for president isn't a good idea. Maybe you okay. drop out. So what if you do something else? <laughs> right. You know, like you're not running for president. All right. Well, give me an example. Of what what are you referring to? You play to? golf. If you play golf, well, the guy's probably got to make a living. Well, that might relax. The guy's incredibly wealthy. He is? Who, who's you, who, who are we talking about? Phil Mickelson. He's a big-time golfer. He's, he's the number two golfer in the world. Okay. Yeah. And his wife has cancer? Yeah, just announced that she had. Uh, she's developed cancer. What kind of cancer? Do I think know? it's breast cancer. Right, she's so. hot, too. So maybe <laughs> that's the kind of cancer where... I mean, you're dealing with it, but he's, but he could still go back to work. Yeah, I, I would say he could wait he can, a week. Well, he did wait a week. That seems appropriate, right? <laughs> I mean, you go, you gotta work. You gotta work. What do you, what do you, oh, you mean, you mean suddenly you don't need money because? Uh, listen, listen. He's got small I mean, kids. That could go on for years and years. Listen, God forbid if it ever happened in the Pages family. If Scott's golfing a week later, that's fucked up. <laughs> but if he's directing here, but, can, yeah. but, but cancer like that. You know, that can be an ongoing problem. I think it's appropriate to go back to work after a yeah, week, sure. you know. Maybe they even help you to forget about world, it. Yeah. Her surgery won't be scheduled until late June or perhaps July. Okay. Mickelson will play two events. What were you his thinking? His schedule will be dictated by his wife's health, he said. He's, He's playing the, yay, my wife's got cancer open. <laughs> <laughs> were, you think, were you thinking it was inappropriate? I'm just wondering. I don't know for sure. I'm I'm like, you had a strong reaction to John Edwards continuing on. Right. This is the guy who talks to the dead, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, two dead wife. it's two different stories. Yes. You got one guy who's running for president of the United States. It's tremendously debilitating to go out on the road. His wife's dying of cancer. Yeah. That's one scenario. Yeah, I think he should have dropped out of that because <clears throat> that's a huge commitment. Mm -hmm. But the but but a guy who golfs for a living <laughs> doesn't need the money. But, okay, doesn't need the money. But his wife's got breast cancer. They're dealing with it. He stays home for a week. He's gonna after the golf game, he can come back home and deal with it. I mean, he didn't have to be well, her side every minute. Tournaments are out away. Nah, you know, it's they're okay. Away. He could wait a week, and it's breast cancer, and he'll you know he'll be there. He'll be around. I'd say a week is appropriate. It's not as bad as if his girlfriend gets cancer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just want to check on these things because I never. John know how Edwards they was saying. Handle. John Edwards was saying, while my wife is dying, I want to run the country. It, right. it seemed ridiculous. That's right. that's correct. Yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, that's weird. It's I mean, okay to play golf, not run the. Country. Well, I mean, golf is the guy. Well, career. if it fucks up uh, this guy Phil, it fucks up his golf game. John Edwards is going to run the country while his wife's dying of cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Mickelson's going to go home and say, "You bitch, you made me hook one of the right." But my point is, if you're distracted, if your golf game's not going to be any good, you might as well stay home. Right. Okay. Yeah. His golf game will always be good. I got a feeling. All right. All right. And finally, this morning. Oh come on! Don't you have any more stories about Barack Obama? No. <laughs> Definitely not. It's been nine years we've waited. And finally, it's happening. For Gilbert to get laid? <laughs> Shire Day is putting out a new album. Oh, thank God. <laughs> More Rays putting out a new album? <laughs> Shire Day, More Rays. I told her to wear salad. <laughs> Bikini Shire Day. <laughs> two, two is a little bit of Shire Day. All right. Didn't she only have one hit song, Smooth Operator? No, she's had a few hit no, songs. That's Sade. <laughs> oh, no, that's Sade. Day. No, oh, Shire Day. Yeah, I'm sorry. Shire Day, yeah. Oh. I don't remember this one being a hit. I don't 
remember saying WNBC Sunday. Oh, I have to get up and dance to this one. This is depressing. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, you know what? Where do you say that? that? This is known. And I'm not kidding. This is known as the best heroin music on the planet. So. Sunday. I know this song. I swear to God, I know this song because if you if you do heroin and listen to Sade, it is probably, it makes meditating look like, you know, getting on a plane. Wow. I mean, it's it's so, like, her voice, some about her voice. Did you actually experience this? Yeah, a bunch of times. Wow, right. really? Yeah. You listened to Sade? Wow. Well, my dealer was a black chick. And um, she... <laughs> <laughs> and she knew Sade. I'm not, I'm, I wish I was kidding. She knew the music of Sade. Yeah, and she said, li she said, listen, just listen to this groove. You know, when you drive to Wilmington, Delaware, it's all you hear. Yeah. <laughs> Our black chicks. Uh, all right, Robin. Sade's last release was 2000's Lovers Rock and featured the songs By Your Side, which we just listened to, and King of Sorrow. Mm -hmm. The disc sold nearly 4 million copies in the U.S. alone. A lot of heroin addicts. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of heroin addicts out there. No, That's but I'm what's happening. And, and there, I don't know this for, for a fact at all. There was an insane rumor that she might have had issues. Oh, really? Yeah. With, because every... Well, so many heroin addicts liked it. They said, "How could she not?" In a way, it's yeah. almost like like Charlie Parker and stuff. Like Miles Davis would and, say, and Billy Holiday. Yeah, and Billy Holiday. Yeah. They'd say to be that good, like you almost got to be on the shit because because that's why they're you know. Who knows? I don't know. All right, Robin. Anything else? I told you that's what. All happened. right. There's yeah. one thing we have to say. Gilbert Gottfried is going to appear at Caroline's at eight o'clock on Broadway in Manhattan. That's going to happen Thursday night. That's a big night for you. Big, big night. Go home, get a lot of sleep, and prepare. And See? bananas next week, and oh, check bananas. the website. Which one? Hasbro Kites or Poughkeepsie? <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. For tickets, oh. go to Caroline's.com or additional tour dates. You can always check GilbertGottfried.com. That's your one place to really be in touch and with and Gilbert. And get the Dirty Joe DVD. Right. And I'm an Emmy nominee, kind of. Really? What do you mean? For this cartoon cyber chase. For you, your unique take on Barack Obama. Yeah. <laughs> what is this cartoon? I've never heard of cyber yeah. chase. Yeah, well, uh, like like anything in my career. Right. <laughs> what is Work. Where does it end? On, on, on PBS. <laughs> yes. On PBS. Yes, Cyber there's Chase. a cartoon on PBS. Yes. <laughs> I can't get a shrimp therine commercial. <laughs> Is this because it's just a for young children? This yes, cartoon it yes. teaches them how to be in life. They learn from Gilbert Gottfried. Right. Yeah, Mom, Sponge Pants just killed Barack Obama. The N word. <laughs> All right, thank you, Gilbert. We wish you a lot of luck in your career. And I do want to mention. Yeah, good luck on the Emmy. Yeah, too late. Yeah, <laughs> and we hope you win. Yeah, we hope you win. <laughs> By the way, God, I want to mention to hear that speech. <laughs> my corporate. Do you have a speech prepared? Well, hello there, everybody. How is, by the way, I have to embarrass myself in front of Gilbert and say I'll be in Princeton tonight. <laughs> Why is that embarrassing? Because I'm plugging and I'm sorry. Oh, but I don't know. He plugs every minute. I know, but I'm in Princeton. I'll be in Princeton at the Barnes and Noble <laughs> signing my book at Princeton Bar, and then I'll be at a diner. Uh, How performing. do you do a book, when, Artie? When you write a book, <laughs> it should have the pages on the inside. The cover should be on the outside, <laughs> and the pages on the inside. Shut up, you racist fuck. <laughs> Right. With your Emmy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Let's go to mycorporation.com. Now, well, I don't have...
qua mọi người và hôm nay bên em về một chiếc i10 lỗi một chiếc i10 2018 bản 1.2 số sàn tuy nhiên là đã bị à, đâm bục kết nước và cũng đã bung tư khí rồi ăn vào sát si vậy mức em giá của em nó là dưới 200 triệu tuy nhiên là trước khi quay tổng thể khi báo giá thì em sẽ quay tổng thể cho mọi người cùng xem xe uh, i10 sản xuất 2018